our favorite state park, Honeymoon Island State Park in Dunedin, Florida, just uh, north of St. Petersburg. We're really happy to be back here, and we're starting the day with a little French toast for breakfast. We bought some raisin cinnamon bread last night at Aldi, and that's going to make some good breakfast. So guess what, you guys? While we were in the van, a little girl came running up from the beach and she said she found a full sand dollar. Then, I heard their family talking about another lady here who's found a bunch this morning. Steve always laughs at me. I told him, next time we come to this beach, I'm going to get in line so I'm ready right here at 8 o'clock to get into the park to find the sand dollars. Because there's people already walking up and down the beach and I'm guessing they got a lot of the sand dollars that were out if there were any there. But maybe I'll find one. Cheer, cheer for me a little bit. I'm hoping that today I'll find a sand dollar. And I'm hoping to take the kayak out. My other goal today is to see dolphins while we're out on the water. I know exactly where to find a sand dollar. Just go beat up that little girl and take it. So this is one of the reasons that Honeymoon Island State Park is one of my favorite state parks. You got the beautiful water, but then you also have all these different trees. And there's water back there. There's like a wooded area in the distance where there's, well, a bunch of birds, owls, eagles, things like that. Just feels like a more wild area. More natural, lots of natural beauty. I love it. Tons, tons of these little turban shells. You can find them everywhere on this beach. I'm on a mission. I'm working hard to find that sand dollar, but so far it's just a bunch of cockle shells and the turban shells. Look, there's this thing. I don't know if it's alive or dead. I guess I'll try to. No, it's dead. But then look, here's a live urchin. We found one of these here before. If you look carefully, you'll see the little legs moving. Isn't that cool? So then when you hold it, you can feel it. It's pretty cool. Look at these finds, but still no sand dollar. Hey, Audra. Yeah? I may not have found a whole dollar, but I found 25 cents. I think that joke's been used before, Steve. I need to get new material. Yeah, I think so. What is that, 40 cents? Whoa, I would say at least 37. <laughs> nice. P.S. Don't be confused by Steve's shirt. It is not Sunday. It's actually Thursday. No, actually, no, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. I couldn't quite find you a whole one, but is this close enough? Uh, maybe. I think I got a dollar's worth. That's great. That's so thoughtful. So, actually, right now, this water is pretty gross. You can see it's all turned up and brown, so you can't really see. I'm trying to find the sand dollars where the waves come in and out, but it's so brown you can't see. It's a little bit blue further out, but not in here. There's our first dolphin. Did you see it? Here he oh. is. They're so close. There's two of them. Yeah. Lots of birds and lots of dolphins. It's too bad I don't have my kayak blown up yet. Double breasted cormorants here. One just popped up 
step out of the water. There's another one. There are so many dolphins out. There goes one. What a great place. So what you doing? Oh, just getting some work done. Yeah, what kind of work? Oh, some secret, top secret work. Oh, I man. could tell you, but then, you know, it wouldn't end well for you. <laughs> well, it's troubleshooting time. The flow of water in our sink is so bad. Steve's trying to dig in and look at it again and see if we can figure anything out. It's even challenging to wash our dishes this morning. Such a tiny, tiny little trickle. So, as we discussed earlier, I believe, it is a really simple system of foot pump. Uh, the pump is sucking water out of a supply tank and then pushes it through whatever, faucet or the end of the hose, whatever. So, there are only so many things that could possibly be wrong with this. So, I'm going to try to approach this logically. First things first is to pull out the hex tubing that goes into the supply tank and give it the old look-see, see if there's anything <laughs> obstructing it and as best I can tell it looks free and clear. There's nothing in the way so there's nothing obstructing the water from at least making it to this point. Now there could be some gremlins living in here <laughs> that aren't paying rent that I'm unaware of and I'll have to see if there's a housing code violation going on. <laughs> so the next obvious thing to do is to check the tube that connects to the PEX tubing. And this is simply a, a quick disconnect and then tubing goes this way. Now interestingly enough if you can see Oops. You think there wouldn't be anything in here because it's just water, right? Right where my thumb is. Oh my gosh. There's a little bit of discolorization. And further up. And a little bit further up. Maybe there's some gremlins living in the tube. <laughs> so maybe we found our gremlins. Is that mold? Uh, well, I don't know. That's when this naturally sits in there. This is kind of the peak of this tubing so that's weird I don't know if water just sitting there over time you know will whatever's in the water will grow and but that's just if on that's the... creating some sort of blockage no it somewhere just, it looks like it's just on the surface on the inside doesn't it like there's nothing built up well whatever's in there doesn't look like it would be blocking it completely but maybe if it is has a tendency to the water is growing yucky yuck maybe it is accumulating in the pump all right just to give you an update where I'm at again here in my hand is the supply line that goes into the supply tank and that feeds up and around it comes down goes into the foot pump and then comes out on this side goes up and connects to the faucet line. So I was able to disconnect this pretty easily with the tools I have on hand and you'll hear that everything is running correctly. There's no obstruction in this portion of the setup. So that tells me that at least it's not the foot pump. That all being said, it's not ideal that there are some black spots in the tubing right there by my thumb. Uh, probably nothing that a little bit of bleach wouldn't handle, but it is kind of surprising that that happens. I'm guessing that it's just because the water sits there in between trips and uh, just has a tendency to grow so maybe it's a good idea to bleed the lines bleach it and bleed the lines in between any inactivity 
Yes. Yeah. So you feel as though it's full? Yeah, it's pretty... Did thing come out? No. I mean, other than just air. Can do it again? So he's blowing on the sink faucet. And it doesn't feel like it's obstructed. I can feel the air coming out. Well, Steve just had his first van casualty. Oh gosh, look here. He bent down and hit the corner of the laptop. I guess that's the risk being in a small space. Howie. You hit right here. All right, well. I have flushed all the lines with bleach water several times and as you saw that seemed to help, um, got out some of the dribblies. Uh, last thing I want to do is take off this faucet head and see what we see. And oobly. I may, mm. <laughs> yeah, may. Maybe I should have started here first. <laughs> Let's see. That means that the water we've been using is kind of gross, right? Yeah. Thick. Oh. Can you see that? Oh uh, yeah, yuck. So sometimes you learn things the hard way. Um, definitely want to keep this guy clean. <laughs> Uh, certainly was obstructing some water flow, to say the least. <laughs> Yuck. There's even a little piece of foil from something. How would that get in there? I don't know how that got in there. That's so weird. Yep. Hindsight being 2020, probably should have started here first. Oh well. At least we know. So honestly, to me, that's pretty perplexing because we start off with city water where we get water at parks where it's supposed to be clean and what is it? Potable? Potable? Potable. I don't know. So how all that gunk got in there, that's kind of gross and disturbing. All right. So obviously we showed you what we got out of this little faucet head. And now this is what it looks like when it's clean. Quite a difference. That would explain why we had some trouble with flow. And I'm not talking about the girl from Progressive. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. All right, I'm going to reinstall the faucet head. And now it's a moment of truth. Well, gee, I don't know. Is that better? <laughs> Just a little bit. So we're making a little lunch now here. It's kind of funny. I guess this is just true to life in general, but when we're in the van, we always expect we have so much more time to do things. Like it's almost two o'clock now. We're just having lunch. Steve just fixed the problem with the faucet. I thought we would have been out on the beach already, maybe kayaking. I don't even know if we'll get the kayak out today because everything just takes longer than you expect. But it is nice to be here by the beach. So we're having a nice time. Seems to be our day for van life problems. Well, it's our standard problem when we try to run the inverter on the Delta. We have to be ever so mindful that it doesn't overheat. Which is so, ridiculous. In some ways, makes sense. Obviously, you don't want to block any of the vents, but... But it's not like it's 90 degree weather. Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. We're trying to charge just one laptop closed. We're not even using it, and... We just kept realizing it wasn't charging anymore after we had it plugged in. So that's pretty frustrating. We need to get some work done. So normally I have the Delta pretty snug up against this wall. And on this side is the intake for the fan. And then the output or the exhaust is on this side. So, I mean, I get it to some degree that you can't be blocking the fan. So... I have to take the strap off and move this out a little bit so that it has enough air circulation. 
So I did that, now it seems like it's running. We shall see. All right, so here we are, no more than five minutes later. And this is what'll happen. The inverter will put out power for a while. You will hear the fans kick on. And then that little warning right there, that little red thermometer, I guess, pops on. You can hear it shut down. It'll beep. And so now it's no longer pushing out uh, 110. Uh, so frustrating. Mm -hmm. So the next drastic step that we've been taking is we have a tiny fan that we'll hook up and point it right at the delta to help the airflow. And last time we encountered all these problems that seemed to do the trick. So we'll try that now. All this seems a bit unnecessary, <laughs> right? The inverter should work without having to set up a dedicated fan that's using more electricity so that thing can cool itself. Anyway, we'll see how long this lasts. Hopefully it'll do the trick. Well, as you can probably see, the fan is no longer working. And that's because, once again, it's overheated. It just makes no sense. I mean, there's nothing more I know to do. There should be plenty... There should be plenty of space around it now. I mean, I can get my hand back there. So, it's got enough airflow had the fan pushing air on it. Just makes no sense. So needless to say, I'm more than a little frustrated with the EcoFlow Delta. To its credit, it seems to do just fine with 12 volt. So far, so good. Just runs like a champ. But ever since we've purchased the Delta and we've tried to use the inverter, we've had this same problem where it'll run maybe for a few minutes at best, and then it just overheats. And again, it's not like we're putting a huge demand on it. We have, at first, it was just a laptop, a closed laptop charging. That's what, 50 watts? And then now this fan, this little fan, I mean, that's what, another 30 watts at max? I don't even know if it's that high. Anyway, it should be able to handle such a light load. So we're not happy with it. Two thumbs down, zero vans. Well, it's pushing 530. We had a lot of work to do in the van today. Gosh, the day just flew by. So I have not found my sand dollar yet. I'm gonna my hunch is that I'm not going to find it today. Um, just doing a last minute walk here on the beach. The tide has gone out. There's a lot of people that have been up and down, so I'm going to guess I'm not going to find my sand dollar. But anyway, I'm just enjoying the last bit of the day. Steve is back on the beach under the umbrella in the chair, just chilling out. I prefer to walk, so I'm trying to get a little walk in now before sunset. There's a lot more people on the beach this time. The last time we were here, it was the end of April. This is middle of February. So I'm gonna guess that there's a lot more snowbirds down here and people vacationing. It was a little nicer to be here when there were less people.
actually sitting under the umbrella anymore. It'd probably be my luck if he actually found a sand dollar. What are you doing? Looking for spare dollars. I was gonna say, it's like if he finds one and I don't. <laughs> I will say, a guy passed me and he was carrying at least like three or four of them. Are you serious? I don't know where he, where he found them. But, um, oh, you should have asked him. And if he has to dig for them or not. I should have wrestled them for him. You should have. I told everybody you'd be sitting under the umbrella. Just got off. I thought was good. I probably should have tried this sooner. I'm out waiting, trying to find a sand dollar still. Especially now that Steve said he saw somebody come in with like three or four of them. But I keep getting hit with waves. Hopefully I can find something. I'm gonna keep trying until the sun sets. guy here. It's a crab. Alright guys, I'm still looking but I cannot find any sand dollars. So I was just looking for more sand dollars and I walked over by these rocks and there were these cute little birds and I looked out and was getting a sunset. And the dolphin came right through. So did you see that? That was a money shot. What a fabulous sunset. Steve went to take a shower. Hopefully he'll be out before the sun's down. Beautiful night. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, there's more dolphins out there. And there it goes. And Steve made it just in time. Come check out this spot. You gotta hike your shorts up like I was. <laughs> sexy, sexy. Sexy, slinky. Wasn't that pretty? Yep. And I had dolphins swim right through, right in front of the sun. Yeah. Look, see, all the, see all the birds here? But no sand dollar. Well, I didn't find a sand dollar, but I did find a few little treasures. I found a fighting conch. I think this is a juvenile fighting conch. And then this is the best. I think this is a banded tulip. And I thought this was cool. This Venus shell with the barnacles growing on it. And then look at this. Cockle shell actually still together. This is what's for dinner. More Mexican themed food. Some black beans and rice. We added some leftover chicken. I think we'll make like a taco salad kind of concoction. What you doing, huh? Yeah. Alright, so we just pulled into the Cracker Barrel north of Dunedin. It's a little different than it has been the other nights. It doesn't look like a big old campground. There's only one other van in the parking lot tonight, and it's nice and quiet back here. 
We are going to play Steve's favorite game now. What is that, Steve? Cabo. Cabo. Time for some fun. And probably for Steve to beat me. Gregory is chaperoning the game. Well, when she's not looking. <laughs> you finally won one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Finally won one. Hmm. I wonder who the winner is. We play best of three. The winner has the lowest score. You might want to check it out. One plus three plus five. Oh, plus seven. Oh, look. One. I'm so sorry. Steve. Hasn't been my day, fellas. Time for bed. <laughs> How's your eye, by the way? Oh, look. Poor Steve. It wasn't one of our best days. I also hit my head a couple times on the uh, top of the van there above the slider. And I didn't get too much work done even though I tried. We'll just have to try again tomorrow for a better day. But can we complain? We were at the beach, so it was still pretty great. Are you noticing a repetitive theme during this trip at all? Usually find ourselves next to a running vehicle. I don't know why that keeps happening, like every single night. So we're parked. Here's our view out the window. We're parked by a bunch of big red buses, which you would think would not be running at 8, 8.30 at night. But one just started up for some reason not too long ago, and that's what you hear. I know what will make Steve feel better. His nightly chocolate fix. Mmm, chocolate. <laughs> Maybe if you hold it up to your eye like an ice pack, it'll get better. We do have an interesting view out the back window tonight. It's really tall grass or a fence. It's better than having other cars in a parking lot. So that's kind of nice. Alright, well I think it's time to call it a night. Yep. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so I'm going to work on editing a video right now so you have something to watch in the near future. Steve already did most of the work on it, but I'm going to do the finishing touches. Then we're going to go to bed. If you want to see more about Honeymoon Island State Park, I will put a link in the description and in the comments to the last time we were there. We had a great time and we showed a lot more of the park, so if you want to see more of it, check it out there. And like Steve said, leave a comment and we'll see you later. Head north. <laughs> What? Or, or head north. Head north. Head north and then leave a comment.